people come at things from a fear-based perspective often. Uh, they And when you're in a fear-based perspective, you go on the defensive instead of going on the offensive. People who have been beaten down for generations just naturally have a defensive mindset, and it's crucial to overcome that. Uh, when you're on the defensive, by definition, you're trying to maintain the status quo. You're not going to make progress. Uh, and people who control society know this. They're always on the offensive. Not a week goes by when some new law isn't proposed to take away your freedom, and it keeps everyone else uh, in a fear-based perspective, on the defensive. It's not to say that you know defensive and offensive action both don't have their place, but the mistake that the ruled class tends to make is, is always coming at things from an innate fear-based defensive position, rather than always looking for the opportunity to go on the offensive to to come up with a new way of doing things, to come up with a new idea. Now, of course, knowing what the next step is and beginning to take action isn't going to happen immediately. If it did, then everything would be constant progress. You know, it takes years sometimes, maybe a lifetime, to determine what the next effective action is and, and to begin working on it. But you only really are failing if you've given up and if you fall into paralysis you know, focus on, on things that don't make progress. And you, you see this in so many different ways. People that just continually focus on conspiracy theories, um, people who are in the bottom rungs of society never making progress because they may be very aware of what the problems are, but all they do is it complain about it in a, in a paralyzed manner. Um, people that seek out drama because of their own frustration and not being able to, to know what the next step is. But if you just keep in mind to focus on the next step, to, to constantly research and, and try to find out what the next effective action is and not be frustrated that, that you don't immediately see the next effective action. It's just a natural process of, of however much time it takes to determine what for you individually is, is the best thing to do. Um, as long as you don't fall into paralysis, that's the important thing. So what are the differences, for example, between uh, offensive and defensive actions? Well, let's look at diet and health. You see some people, they finally learn that their diet is unhealthy, and then they go to the grocery store and they're constantly reading through every little ingredient on the box of processed food, always in a defensive mindset, what are they going to add to my food to poison me this year? That's a defensive mindset. An offensive mindset would be, gee, I'm going to grow my own food or buy whole foods and prepare it myself, and I'm going to study and learn better traditional recipes to improve my health. The next crucial thing in affecting change is maybe best illustrated by the quote, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. That's by Mike Tyson. Bruce Lee said that all fixed set systems are inflexible and incapable of change. The truth lies outside of all fixed set systems. Musashi said a warrior should never favor one weapon, and Sun Tzu maybe put it best by saying that the greatest strategy is to have no strategy, but to use your enemy's strategy against him. All of these people, for the greatest fighters in history, are saying the same thing, that there is no one dogmatic plan that, that you're going to be able to always succeed with. And fighters realize this innately because they're viscerally held to account in the real world on a constant basis. Whereas the opposite of a fighter is a philosopher, people who are never really held to account because their ideas can't necessarily be proven. And therefore, they're very attached to dogma. If you aren't acting in the real world, and you're just philosophizing, it's easy to become attached to dogma because you, you'll, you'll never know whether your ideas work or not. You see this problem constantly in people who are trying to affect positive change in their lives. Let's say that you learn that your diet is unhealthy. What do a lot of people do? They immediately become attached to an extremely dogmatic uh, new diet, and they don't want any criticism of that new diet. Uh, unfortunately, you see a lot of this in the raw food commu community. You know, terribly afraid if anyone criticizes the, the raw food diet. Um, you see it in the, the economic freedom community. Um, I was one of the first, perhaps the first on YouTube that promoted investing in precious metals, but people become dogmatically attached to that view, and if something like Bitcoin comes along, they're terrified and, and you know constantly trying to trash it. And this doesn't mean you have to give up on your ideals, the ideal of health or the ideal of freedom, but I find that you make the fastest progress when you're actively looking for flaws in your current belief systems, when you're always looking for ways to modify your plan in order to improve it, rather than what most people do, become dogmatically attached to their current plan.
And lastly, I think the wonderful thing about effecting change in yourself or in society is that it's ultimately a journey of self-improvement. People think that they're fighting against some outside oppressive forces, but actually society has always been going through change, improvement, and regression. It's more about yourself and, and what part you're going to play in that change and, and how you're going to come out of it in the end. The internet makes it inevitable that the existing control structures in society are going to drastically change, just like the printing press made it inevitable that the power of the Catholic Church would collapse. The real question is whether you're going to be an effective part of that change for the better, or whether you're just going to get carried along by events and end up right back where you started even after society has changed. And this really depends on yourself and, and your own self-improvement. You could consider that we are all where we are individually and collectively, not so much because of outside oppressive forces, but because of the actions that we've taken and the skills or lack of skills which we exhibit. Um, maybe it's in some people a lack of ethics that causes a problem, or lack of motivation, or lack of knowledge. But it's really improving in these areas that effectively changes our own life. If we focus less on frustration and action, blame and repetition, and focus more on self-improvement and concrete offensive actions, that's what ultimately affects change in ourselves and in society.